Hello friends, Brianna here, Associate Director of Theatre, Education and Arts at Miami Children's Museum. With me is my friend and Miami Children's Museum Theatre Troupe member, Crystal. And we are coming to you live from Art Basel, Miami. Art Basel is a large-scale international art fair where leading galleries from five continents show significant works by masters of modern and contemporary art, as well as a new generation of emerging artists. Miami Children's Museum has partnered with Art Basel for the past 18 years, bringing family programming to fairgoers right here at the Miami Beach Convention Center. We even piloted the first Art Kids program. Miami Children's Museum features over 17 interactive and engaging exhibit galleries, as well as daily programming focused on arts, culture, community, and communication. And it's only minutes from Miami Beach where we are right now. Miami Children's Museum is a child's first introduction to art and culture, so we are delighted once again to be partnering with Art Basel for the 2021 fair and additionally bringing you this virtual field trip. So. Pack your lunch, turn in your permission slip, and board the bus to Art Basel, Miami. Here is how your Art Basel virtual field trip is going to work. We are going to take a deep dive into five different artworks here on display at Art Basel, Miami. Once we've explored the artworks, Crystal and I are going to give you questions and discussion prompts and an activity for you to do in your classroom or at home. So you have a choice on how to do this virtual field trip. You can either watch the video all the way through or you can pause after each artwork and do the discussion and activity. It's up to you. So let's get started. Take it away, Crystal. Our virtual field trip takes us to the Meridians, Art Basel's platform for large-scale projects that push the boundaries of the traditional art fair layout. Let's take a look around. This year, the Meridians is curated by Magali Ariola, the director of Museo Tamayo in Mexico City. We were fortunate enough to sit with Magali and discuss the five featured artworks of our virtual field trip. My name is Magali Arriola. I am curator of Meridians and I am from Mexico City. So a curator is a person who organizes exhibitions and I would say there's as many ways of doing this as there are curators in the world. Uh, you could do like a exhibition, like a solo exhibition of just one artist, which would mean like really going in depth into his practice or her practice and really organize things in such a way that could make sense for other people. And you could also do like a group show, which would be like a different kind of exercise in which you would bring together different people's works in for the sake of, of an argument. And then you would develop and articulate other meanings out of each piece that makes an exhibition. You can study to become a curator. Uh, there are curatorial studies, but you could also study art history, for example. I wouldn't say that there is just like one way of becoming a creator or just one uh, path to follow, but it's really uh, something that can be very intuitive. So there's a very specific process behind Meridians. Uh, you really can apply like any gallery that is participating in Art Basel can apply and put forward an artist and make a proposal and we take it from there. So we literally make like a pool of artists and then try to articulate something out of those. And we have a, com a selection committee 
So we all work together selecting the works. So it's like a really long process, lots of discussion. Of course, as a creator, I also do a lot of reaching out to different galleries uh, from different parts of the world, not only the US, but uh, Latin America, Europe. And then once we have like everything, we tend to uh, try to make sense again out of, you know, like the, the different parts that we have to work with. I would almost be tempted to say that it's more the artworks that reach out for you than you needing to have to look for something. And some people would be attracted to some works, some people would be attracted to a different kind of work. This is a work by Maxwell Alexandre. It's titled, untitled New Power Series. He is an artist from Brazil, from Rio de Janeiro. And what he usually does in his work is to depict like everyday scenes that take place in Rocinha, which is a favela, which is one of those suburbs outside of uh, cities in Latin America. And he really creates like narratives out of those. This work is a newly produced work and it's actually related to, to some other pieces that he is showing in Paris and in Brazil at the same time, both in Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. And he really wants to create a kind of link between uh, whatever he's showing here, which is a little bit the relationship that people, you know, like normal people that are not involved into the arts, establish with artworks within a context like the art fair or a museum and really uh, try to, to point to certain issues such as how actually people can be kind of removed from the artwork and how you could probably create a different kind of link if you come closer to it, both in a literal way and a symbolic way. So there are many subjects in this painting. Uh, as you can see, you have like all these different figures, different sizes. So uh, what the artist normally does is to create like narratives out of the different characters that appear in the painting. The ones you can see on the right hand side, upper side of the painting are some school children who are actually wearing the uniform of public schools in, in Rio. And that's a reference again of uh, his own childhood and his own persona and his own experience as he used to go to museums when he was younger and when he studied art. And again, you know, like, uh, I think this work kind of points to the fact that it's very difficult sometimes to bridge those like social gaps between different peoples and different uh, populations. And this is what, uh, this painting was aiming to do, you know, like really bringing together all those different worlds. I think one of the interesting things about this work is that there is a, uh, let's say like a, a kind of clash between what is presented. Uh, you have like all these guards and all these school children, which both reference like very different worlds and they are confronted across like these blank paintings which, as you can see, have uh, those like kind of very old frame, you know, like very westerny kind of Baroque frames, you know, like as in old times. But the center of the painting is, keeping, is, is kept blank. And I guess that's like also a way of inviting the spectator to just like project whatever he wants to project into the, into the canvas. So it really gives like much more amplitude to, to the meaning of the, of the word. It is now come to the time for your questions and discussion and activity on this artwork. So question number one, what do you notice about the piece? Question number two, what do you wonder about this artwork? What questions come up in your mind? Question three, do you like it? Yes, no, maybe, why, why not? Question four, how does this piece of artwork make you feel? And finally, your activity. Here it is. You see the blank pieces of artwork, the brown paper, the kind of yellowy texture. You are going to change those artworks, 
create something that is to be of interest to the black characters in this piece. Have fun! This work uh, comes from a series which is called the Dalmatian paintings and that name comes from the spotted figures that you see behind me. This artist normally uses uh, different symbols to address like different social issues such as racism. This painting is part of a series that is called the Dal Dalmatian paintings and for which the artist has used as a reference the Dalmatian dog and you probably recognize the spots that you see on uh, the first of uh, those particular dogs on the back of the painting and what happens here is that he creates like uh, some sort of melting of what one normally would uh, assume is a, fi a figure, you know, like a dog, and he turns it into an abstract uh, painting. So an abstraction means uh, like taking, you know, like probably like the, the minimal shapes of something or the essence of something and turn it, turning it into something that is not, like an image that is not uh, figurative, that doesn't have a, a like a describing uh, figure that would let you identify whatever we're, we're the, is, the, is being depicted. So in this case, it's this kind of merge of uh, a dog. And, and this is like the, the kind of dog that one would associate with uh, white higher classes, which uh, is something that the, the artist wants to address as in his childhood that's what he would be confronted as a black kid with uh, when, whenever he would see a, a Dalmatian dog. Now it's time to question, it's time to discuss, and it is time to do an activity based off of this piece of art. So, question number one. What do you notice about this piece? Question number two. What do you wonder about this piece? What are some questions that you have based on this piece? Question number three. Do you like it? Yes or no? And let's elaborate on that. Why or why not? Question number four. How does this artwork make you feel? And finally, it's time for our activity. Using patterns and textures, colors and shapes, Create your own piece of abstract art based off of a childhood memory. This work is by Jacqueline de Jong and the title of the work is The Backside of Existence. The title is a reference to the idea of the work itself. Uh, as you will see, it's like a double-sided painting. So, and it's also a painting, if you have noticed, on a very rough material, everyday material, which is actually a sailcloth. So it's really, uh, it's really like kind of getting out of the canvas somehow. And you can also see that there is a very sculptural quality to the work, where, you know, like because of the position it has, you can see like some different angles and that also is very much echoed with the different shapes of the different characters that we see in the painting. So behind me you can see like these two feminine figures. Well, maybe one is feminine but the other would probably look like, much, like a much more hybrid kind of creature, maybe animal, maybe human. And the whole work is very expressionistic. This artist uh, was part of a movement in Europe uh, back in the 1960s, early 60s, late 50s, which was called the, the International Situ Situationist. And that was a group that was actually very vocal and uh, very, very much looking towards like breaking all the divisions, you know, like in, in in, like in the city, in social space, in such a way as to break the barriers, the, the mental barriers that can sometimes uh, bring people apart. So this is probably why uh, the shape of this piece is like double, not the shape, but like the idea behind this piece is to make a double-sided painting because it would really allow you to walk around it and uh, you, can, you can see like the other side of the painting 
it's just like a different, completely different kind of um, situation that is depicted. What was really appealing to me from this piece was to start with the figures. I would say they are very, very emotionally charged and very expressionistic. I love the colors of it. Uh, they're like very, there's like very subtle changes of colors between, you know, like one figure and the other. And also the fact that this uh, artist was one of the very few women that participated in the international situationist movement, which was very much male-based. So I think this really makes it stand out, you know, like historically uh, standing out from like the context where it comes from. I think it's very important how the, the work is shown. Uh, as I was saying before, it has like very sculptural uh, features in a way very much because of the material on which it is painted. It's like a very heavy material and uh, so as soon as as the the cloth takes like different shapes, it, it somehow enhances also the different forms of the bodies that are depicted on it. Now we have come to the time for you to discuss, question and do an activity based on this piece of artwork. So question number one. What do you notice about this piece of art? Question number two, what do you wonder about this piece of art? What questions come up for you? Question number three, do you like it? Yes, no, maybe. Why? Why not? And question number four, how does this artwork make you feel? And finally, your activity. Grab a found object like this artwork was made from a sale. So find something that you wouldn't usually create art on and create a scene with two unlikely people in it. Good luck. This is a work by Howardina Pindel and it's titled Sweatshop. What you see behind me are like these different cutouts of like everyday objects such as uh, either underwear, gloves, uh, kitchen utensils and printed on them are like these different references to what the price of it would be. But then from time to time in different objects you see other things which are uh, stating six cents an hour for example. So that's a reference to not to the price of the object but to what it costs you know like making the object and more specifically what the person who makes that object makes uh, an hour. So the, the work as a whole points to all these different um, like situations in which like some people would like be less favored by the conditions in which they work and the difference to which uh, that points out with uh, to the people who would buy those things that are made in those sweatshops. This piece has some other works in the show allude to something that is called activism, which is like taking like an active part or playing an active role into like certain uh, situations that might help other people to get out of um, like the, the very poor living conditions in which they might find themselves. So in this case, in this particular case, pointing to the differences between, you know, like the, the labor conditionings from some people to other people might help to, to make, you know, like the viewer, the, the person who comes to see the, the art fair and the, the person who experiences the artwork be conscious about all those differences that permeate everyday life. Now it's time to discuss, to question, and do an activity based on sweatshop. Question number one. What do you notice about this piece? Question two. What do you wonder about this piece? What questions come up in your mind when you see it as you process it? Question three, do you like it? Why or why not? Question four, 
How does the artwork make you feel? You can talk about your initial reaction to the piece itself. Question five. What do you think about the hourly wages or the price tags? And finally, our activity. I want you to find a cause that you are very passionate about and create a piece of activism art. This work is by, by Yinka Shonibare and it's called Moving Up. What you see is a staircase, uh, very much into like the European style, like old style, very baroque, and some figures climbing up. And the the reference of uh, this moving up is uh, is a reference to the great migration that happened in the early 20th century from the south states of the United States to the north, and. Uh, all those people migrating were like most of them uh, African Americans that were looking for better opportunities. So of course uh, there was a very different kind of situation in the south than in the north. The north was much more industrialized, there were more jobs for people available. So that's what caused like all these people trying to, to move to look for a, a better life. And the figures uh, that you see, the, the, all the fabrics that they're wearing, that's a very uh, usual thing in the work of this artist. He uses what they call African fabrics, which are these fabrics that are inspired or based on Indonesian patterns, but that were processed afterwards. And this is a little bit a reference to what one usually assumes would be associated with a certain culture or a certain uh, people from certain parts of the world, but they're actually imported from other parts of the world. So this is like really like a kind of critique to this um, vision where we always try to match one image to a specific region or another uh, cultural trait. Installation art is an artistic genre that uh, developed out of sculpture and it is pretty much from the 1960s that means maybe some like 50 60 years ago when artists were actually trying to take the sculpture off the plinth and really have the spectator have a much more direct experience of the work i think this piece is a very timely work that addresses many of the issues that we're still facing today. Even though uh, the work refers to almost a century ago, to the very beginning of the 20th century, I think it's still like very something that is very valid and something that is really happening on an everyday basis, not only in the US, even though the work refers to the great migration in the US, but also in other parts of the world where people are forced to leave their, their, you know, like the places where they live and they have to go through like these different processes. Okay, now it is time for your questions and discussion and activity. So, question one, what do you notice about this piece? I notice blank. Question two, what do you wonder about this piece? What questions come to mind when you look at the piece. Question three, do you like it? Why, why not? Question four, how does this artwork make you feel? Question five, what do you think this piece means? Or what does it mean to you? And finally, your activity. Think of a moment in your life where you had to leave a situation leave a home, leave to go to a new school, leave a party, leave a, a, a friend's house and create a art piece on that moment in time for you. We have come to the end of our Art Basel virtual field trip. Thank you Magali for your insights into the artworks of the Meridians and thank you all for watching along and learning with us. If you would like to find out more about these works, Magali or Art Basel, visit artbasel.com.
Tom. We hope that you'll come and visit us at Miami Children's Museum. We have hours of fun for children ages 0 to 8. Or you can check out with your whole family our large virtual library with over 300 videos of story time, shows, sing-alongs, activities and more. So like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. Until next time, I'm Crystal. And I'm Brianna. And we hope that you have a, a lovely, lovely, wonderful, wonderful day. day.